we're trying to work with a material that people don't traditionally use to make instrument mechanisms. And the material does not work the same way that traditional materials work. So uh, we had to figure out a design that was suitable for stainless steel. And uh, so we wound up with a kind of updated Art Deco design. And the first rendition was uh, my hand-drawn parts on a piece of scrap paper. That's scrap paper. So that was version number one. And you can start to see the rectangular key design. Uh, all those elements that you see on the finished instrument are present on the original design. Next, we had one of our people do a sketch of a, uh, I won't say complete instrument, but the bulk of the instrument. And this is kind of a pencil, pen and pencil type mm -hmm. sketch. So this was version number two. And in this particular version, you can see um, we're trying to get all the, key, all the uh, arms of the keys coming from one side or the other. Uh, then we go to another CAD version. And here, we started running into space problems. That there are some practical issues with how keys are designed. And there's a reason they come a certain way. So then we had to start changing the, where the arm approaches the key but we weren't real happy about that aesthetically. And then we wound up with something that's pretty much what we have as our final design. And you can see, once again, the arms are coming off the edges of the touches or the, the key cups. Uh, part of what we had to deal with is we had to actually add touches. We were hoping at the beginning we could just do the single key with the touch built in, but that didn't work. And so uh, we had to add extra pieces. And that, of course, takes extra time. And, costs extra money. But this is kind of an interesting evolution when you look at the design from uh, scrap paper, hand-drawn, down to your CAD version, and then finally to the actual instrument. <laughs>